All right, welcome everyone. I am the Dungeon Master, and this is an overview of the continent of Tenkenarth. It is the main continent in my homebrewed world, and it is very much based on um, European centric ideals of uh, medieval life we're gonna start kind of at the beginning with like a chronological um overview of how everything came to be tens of thousands of years ago air thallus was on the fey wild and due to the fluctuating chaotic nature of fey magic it teleported, transformed itself over to the material plane. And once on the material plane, the elves that were born were no longer immortal. They still lived far longer than anything else, but they were not immortal. And so they began to explore and conquer their new world they found priv primitive humans who they quickly enslaved they found giants who controlled the entire eastern half of the continent as well as the north um, there's another northern continent but we will uh, you know cover that in another session um, for now they were conquering the primitive humans and staying away from the giants who had powerful magics that could rival their own they eventually came upon the dwarves and unknown to history each side telling its own version of the story there was a falling out and the elves and the dwarves went to war and this war lasted for hundreds of years. And over the course of the time of the war, Kisden, here in the center of the continent, was on the front line and took the brunt of the elves' attacks. The elves started using underground guerrilla tactics to sneak up on the dwarves, and the branch of elves that were best at it eventually became the drow. But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. The giants and the elves were also at war at this point, And the dwarves managed to free themselves from the giant slavery in most of the territories except for the very far north. And so now there was like a three-way death match for control of the world. And just when the elves seemed to be recovering and making ground, that is when the civil war between the elves happened and the drow split forever. And the war between the elves, the dwarves, the giants, and themselves was just too much for the elven empire Eventually, they lost all of their footholds, which had stretched all the way from the very western tip of Bretonia all the way down to the south in New Eglia, up through the border kingdoms and even parts of Greenyord here. The giants controlled the rest. And they lost all of that. They were forced to retreat bit by bit back until Sheath Caloria was the last Sheath Calora was the last outpost. Air Thallus was pulled back to the Fey Wild, and Sheath Calora fell into forgotten memory, and it became the Wood or the Wild Elves. The Wood Elves still live in Sheath Calora proper, 
the wild elves have formed tribes that roam the rest of the woods. The kingdom of Bretonia was one of the first humans to rise from the dark ages that followed the elves leaving. The dwarves, having won, had won at such a cost that they were forced to uh, retreat back to their mountains and shelter themselves, um, no longer having control of vast swaths of the foothills. It was during this time that two great empires began to rise. The Five Kingdoms is basically a fantasized version of the Three Kingdoms period in China. There are several clans, but the one that we concern ourselves with is the Dragon Clan. They were able to uh, rise to prominence very quickly after the giants had retreated back to the north and the dwarves had retreated to their mountains. And they formed a, sh a city, Linjiang, right on the river. And it was heavily fortified and a major trade port. And so therefore, they rose in prosperity and wealth very quickly. The other one was both the Kingdom of Bretonia and Old Kaldar. These two sister nations of sort were two human tribes who had fought together against the elves and had sworn oaths of brotherhood long ago. However, as time went on, the, the kingdom of Bretonia was formed into a kingdom by one of its great warlords, and they became very close with the elves of Shaith Kalora and were isolated and became a little more xenophobic and pious, whereas the humans of Old Kaldar studied the ways of science and um, became very technologically advanced, building machines of war, siege towers and catapults and ballista. They also built great ships and, and sailed all along the coast here. Eventually, Old Kaldar fell as the new Kaldon the Caldonian Empire rose. This new empire was no longer going to worship the old pagan gods of, of uh, old Kaldar, but instead would worship all of the pantheon of the Forgotten Realms gods under one united uh, church and would have one united language and would have one centralized army rather than a bunch of lords each commanding their own armies and the new caldonian empire rose so quickly that it conquered most of the uh, continent in just a few generations however there were a few other uh, human populations that were rising at this time as well you have Eglia. It is a very egalitarian, um, everyone is equal sort of uh, country, except for it still has so many nobles who have so much wealth and so many peasants who don't that eventually uh, they had a civil war as well. That is where Carpathia comes in. Now, Carpathia was mostly just Kastra down here, the capital city. Kastra benefited from being very close to Kar Kizdin, and so they had gained some of the dwarven uh, secrets of architecture and, um, you know, just 
general uh, structure building um, for for their roads and all of that. And so Castra was a very powerful city state. However, they eventually expanded and became the kingdom of Carpathia. And when the Eglian civil war happened, Carpathia stepped in and was able to seize vast swaths of Eglia in exchange for setting up new Eglia over to the east. However, when Caldonia rose to power, they quickly swept through Eglia and most of Carpathia, except for the north, and were able to take New Eglia and the border kingdoms and controlled everything that the old elven empire once controlled except for Bretonia and the northern part of Carpathia. al Qadim was able to maintain its freedom through the fact that the vast desert was too hard to cross and the Caldonians stopped when they met the great horde, the, the orcish hordes, far to the east in the deep forests they they were unable to to advance against the might of the horde and so had to stop the horde of the wilds proved equally treacherous and so the lesser nobles were given castles and keeps along the border kingdoms and were set about to the task of defending the edge of the kingdom at this time, however, Frageshelmir rose up and began to build ships that allowed them to cross the Gulf of Blood and began to raid like Vikings all along the shores and coasts of Kaldar and Caldonia. And as the raiding increased, they had to pull their forces back allowing the great orcish horde to sweep in through Greenyard and the border kingdoms. And it forced many of the uh, nobles to fend for themselves and pay less taxes. Eventually, the Caldonian Empire fell when one of the emperors had three sons. He split his kingdom, his empire, into three there was the Far Western Empire, which was Caldonia through Eglia and Southern Carpathia. There was the Middle Empire, which covered Old Kaldar and the Border Kingdoms and New Eglia. And then there was the Eastern Empire, which was mostly the eastern half of the border kingdoms and Greenyard here, as well as parts of the horde that were still technically claimed, but were already overrun at this point. That was given to his least loved son, and unfortunately, you can probably guess where things went from here. Eventually, New Eglia and Carpathia teamed up and drove Caldonia out of Carpathia uh, completely. Also at this time, Carpathia and New Eglia had a falling out as a Carpathian prince and a New Eglian princess were to wed and complications with the wedding led to Carpathia declaring an eternal blood vendetta against New Eglia. Eglia also rose again at this time with help from Bretonia, who no, lo who no longer viewed... Uh, who uh, Caldonia as a, a sister state and instead viewed them as a conquering tyrannical force and so helped Eglia gain its freedom and the entire Western Empire fell and it was only Calda Caldon uh, and Old Caldar left with the border kingdoms now fending completely for themselves. The rest of Tenkenarth consists of the Kaljeshki Empire, a group of Russian-like dragonborn, the Shogunate of Rokugan, a, a group of human and half-orc samurai, Shibahia, a trading port that 
is very much like Southeastern Asia. Zirin, an island of Yonti. Oskinar, a island of volcanic activity so great that the water around it is called the burning ocean and no one dares go there. Al-Fakirim, a highly religious uh, state that opposes al um very bohemic nature. Frageshelmir is the Vikings and they control Greenyord now. And Angelgrund is a group of Finnish-like humans who live in a land so cold that it is almost always frozen year-round. The Jotunverold is a land of half-giants and goliaths that live all throughout the mountains and in the glaciers, and even some ice giants still live in the far north. That is it, except for the dwarven kingdoms of Har Craig and Kisden. Kar Kisden is the Golden Empire and was once um, one of the mightiest dwarven mountain kingdoms around, though now the city is nothing more than a ghost town compared to the height of its glory. And then you have the Silver Kingdom of Kar Karber and Har Craig is the rest of the Dwarven Mountains. These three mountains are nothing compared to what they once were. And that is due to the sundering that took place that split Tenkenarth from South Tenkenarth, which we will cover in a future video. Thank you, anyone, for watching, and as always, everyone, good gaming.